but there's no substitute to uh, uh, going and, and meeting the person you're doing business with, uh, providing them the assurance and demonstrating uh, the fact that you could deliver on time, on target, on quality uh, to meet everybody's expectations. Welcome to the Smarter Building Materials Marketing Podcast, helping you find better ways to grow leads, sales, and outperform your competition. All right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, alongside my co-host, Beth Popnikolov. We've got a great show lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about sustainability, how that applies to building products, how you can actually leverage that to grow sales and grow your business. We have a phenomenal guest lined up for you today as well. We are really excited to welcome Ted Durgasoff. He is the CEO of New Life Forest Restoration. They really live and breathe sustainable forestry, and we are very excited to dive in with all of our sustainability questions today. So Ted, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Beth. Thanks, Zach. Before we get started, why don't you take a couple minutes and talk to us about who you are, what you do, and introduce our listeners to New Life Forest Restoration. Uh, well, my name is Ted Dergossif. I'm uh, uh, two years with uh, New Life Forest Products. I'm a career uh, lumber guy and uh, uh, over the years have developed uh, uh, expertise in extracting higher value out of uh, out of all types of different uh, logs and different species. And this is this opportunity is particularly exciting because it uh, primarily has to do with uh, restoring the nation's forest, Ponderosa Pine Forest in Northern Arizona to, to the state they once were. So for our listeners, you are a lumber dealer and you also harvest and collect lumber as well. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Oh, the, the New Life Forest Products, we're a vertically integrated company. Uh, we work with the U.S. Forest Service uh, and uh, we uh, restore the forest on a prescription basis. They, they, they uh, give us a, a parcel of uh, forest that needs uh, us to go in and clean out the undergrowth and remove uh, the uh, small trees or space the forest accordingly. And then from there, we've got... Uh, sawmills and we're building another sawmill in uh, Belmont, Arizona, just outside of Flagstaff that uh, takes the uh, thinnings and the small logs that we do extract and we convert those into lumber products. And then uh, ponderosa pine being uh, typically a, a, a non-construction uh, product, uh, we've got an engineered wood plant, which uh, takes the, the boards, the ponderosa pine boards, and makes higher end products, including siding and trim and fascia products. Excellent. So you are, are you primarily selling in Arizona specifically? Or are you selling nationwide? Our, our products uh, go nationwide. Okay. Uh, we try to focus on uh, working with uh, stocking distributors uh, and those that'll get our product out into the retail lumber yards. Okay. Great. So, you know, one reason why we're really excited to chat with you, Ted, is just to hear a little about the sustainability component of how you all are marketing your business, because a lot of what we hear is that oftentimes sustainability can come at the expense of profit and or growth. And it feels like, at least from like looking at your website and hearing you talk, like that is at the core of your mission is to help forests specifically in Arizona, as well as just breed a, a bigger culture around sustainability. So I'd love to hear from you about how are you leveraging your position on sustainability, making that at the core of your business to ultimately grow and expand, you know, whether that's revenue or, or sales, whatever it might be, how are you all doing that <laughs> is really the big question. What are, how are you doing it? What, what does that look like? You know, can you walk us through that? Well, the the the, uh, the nature of our business, the essence of our business is forest restoration. And, and over the years, over the last uh, 10 or so years, we've developed an expertise on how to go in and, 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 and uh, do the work in the forest. And then we've also gained an expertise on how to convert those uh, types of restor restoration grade logs into lumber products. 
and also we brought in the expertise on how to convert those to the high-end products, primarily engineered products, uh, finger-jointed, edge-glued, painted products that uh, that compete on any level with uh, with those like products in, in the marketplace. Now, we strongly feel that uh, our product line, which comes from uh, the restoration efforts, uh, has a compelling story uh, to tell, and we're confident that the uh, consumers, the, the end users of of, uh, of our products uh, will we'll embrace the fact that their products, consumers all have a choice and uh, we're confident that they'll choose a product that's, uh, that's uh, made out of uh, the, the efforts in making our forests uh, uh, better and less susceptible to the fires that we've seen over the last several years. Uh, but you guys really take it even a step further because you're not just helping to restore forests and you're not just using sustainable forestry practices. You also are a zero waste manufacturer. Is that right? Well, all of our products, uh, uh, right from the forest uh, through to the uh, milling process, the, uh, all of the byproducts have, uh, uh, have homes. The, in the forest, uh, we're able to, to chip products and, and those uh, chips, they go for uh, playground material for landscaping and whatnot. And, and uh, uh, the next level down of uh, residual products, uh, uh, the, the pine needles and, and whatnot, they get, uh, they get ground and those form uh, a fuel for uh, power generation. I'd love to go back for just a minute and talk more about the story that you're selling to the consumer, because that's really where sustainability can get traction is that's something that we know consumers today really demand more and more is one, they care a lot about where their products are coming from, but also they care about partnering and purchasing from sources that have a story to tell. Can you tell me about what that process looks like from an internal perspective, how you've crafted the story? What are the points that you're hitting with the story? And maybe even some feedback or traction you feel like you've seen because of that story positioning? Well, the the the, the message or the story is, is con- compelling, we feel, on, on uh, in its own right. Uh, being able to take the thinnings from the national forest and convert them into uh, lumber products, into appearance-grade products, sidings, uh, trim boards, fascia products, uh, uh, tongue and groove paneling. Um, those are all uh, specialty products because they, they require a, a higher level of attention to detail. And, and certainly consumers have a choice, but, but uh, we know with our team, with our uh, technical team, that we are making products that compete on every level uh, with respect to uh, quality and finish and, and availability. Uh, and, and presenting to the consumer that they always have a choice. We've had a very, very good success on uh, feedback from the consumers saying that uh, given all the options out there, uh, that they really want to embrace the product that comes from, from making our forests more healthy. What kind of input or feedback are you hearing from the marketplace, Ted? Are people saying, are they coming to you and like, oh, we really want this product? Or is there a level of convincing that you have to do to say, hey, and I don't know, I don't know about your pricing here, but like to, if your product costs more, are, they, are you having to convince them this is why you need to pay more for our product because there's a level of sustainability? Or is, are we at a point in society where that story is selling itself? Well, well, first and foremost, we have to be competitive in the marketplace, and and we're uh, we're price competitive with uh, certainly with our competitors, and and uh, we compete every day on uh, for for shelf space and and for uh, uh, on the product offerings. The re- the very interesting thing about our engineered wood products plant, where we finger joint uh, edge glue and uh, uh, surface and paint, is is that. Uh, it, consider it 3D uh, printing with little pieces of wood where, where we're able to turn over our orders considerably quicker than, uh, than most other manufacturers. And when you're working with stocking distributors, it's all about turns. And, uh, and, and if you're able to, to bring in an order, uh, turn it around and get it out the door into the hands of our distributors who then in turn take it to the retail lumber yards, uh, uh, that efficiency, that uh, uh, the, the link from manufacturing to the end user uh, shortens in time considerably. And, and 
and that's really significant as well because that's that's the business of of distribution is get it in get it out and get it out to the uh, consumers so so we we've not only do we have a compelling story on the uh on the sustainability on on making our forests uh uh, healthier. Uh, we're doing it in a way that uh, that we can meet the needs of the the our customers, which are largely the distributors, uh, and and uh, make us their preferred choice, their preferred supplier. Is there? You're saying so much that's important, and you guys have a compelling story, and you've got a really compelling go to market strategy that's appealing to your stocking dealers. Are there any specific sales or marketing tactics that you feel have worked really well over the last year or two years? Well, we, we've just started our engineered wood products uh, facility here uh, six weeks, two months ago. So we're just in the infancy and it, and it's our, our team's uh, uh, history. Uh, we've, we've done this with other uh, species and products and different area uh, different parts of North America before and it's a uh, uh, it's something we have a, a a lot of experience with and uh, but there's no substitute to uh, uh, going and, and meeting the person you're doing business with uh, providing them the assurance and demonstrating uh, the fact that you could deliver on time on target on quality uh, to meet everybody's expectations if I can pivot for a second, Ted, I'd love to hear your perspective on what's happened in the lumber, lumber industry in the last 12, 18 months. Like whoever thought that like lumber prices would make like the front page <laughs> of news, you know? And so I, you know, I'd love to hear your, your take on, Hey, you know, we saw this massive, huge spike in pricing. We've seen a little, a little bit of a, a decrease of the last couple of months. How do you see things trending more moving forward? Are we back at a say, steady state? Or are we going to see another price escalation? Well, uh, all the information that we have available, uh, the uh, the massive run up in prices and the subsequent uh, fall uh, was was uh, was unique. It's not it's not something that I think anybody's planning on, or I don't think it's anything that too many people are expecting. Again, uh, in 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 the long term, the housing market will continue to be strong. Uh, uh, housing starts will continue to be strong. Uh, we're, at a, uh, we're not meeting or fulfilling the, the household formation requirements uh, you know, in, in, in North America. So, so, the, uh, so we think demand will be strong. Uh, uh, we don't see an escalation in prices that we've seen before or, or the subsequent drop. Uh, uh, both are not healthy in the long run for the industry as a whole. Uh, the high prices invite uh, uh, competition from other other materials other than wood, and uh, uh, while we compete uh, daily with our uh, with our friends who, who are also in the lumber industry, it's uh, it's important that those 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 are our competitors, and and that we're not inviting uh, competition from other building materials. True. Yeah. I mean, that was one thing we spoke about when pricing was so high was that it was introducing other more traditionally more expensive alternatives to lumber in the built environment or in the home. Um, you know, Ted, one other thing I'd like to just, you know, in, in close and get your perspective on is if a manufacturer is listening to you and they're going, wow, look at the success of this organization, look how they've leveraged and, and used their positioning around sustainability to grow sales and grow the organization. I mean, you guys are opening up a new mill here. I actually was checking out Google and saw that as well. You know, what advice would you give them? Like, what would you tell them if they're saying, hey, we know we've got a sustainability story. How should they leverage it? And where do you see the, the greater spectrum of the marketplace responding to it best? Yeah, I, I think in general, uh, that there's, there's always opportunities for these types of sustainability uh, products uh, and, and manufacturing uh, processes that that uh, that people figure out. Um, it, it's it's uh, it's really going from tip to tail. Uh, in our case, we go right from the forest right through the, to the end product. Uh, um, if it's a if it's a new entrant with with just a really good idea, uh, I'd suggest they surround themselves with. Uh, with good people, with a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience, uh, there's a lot of moving parts, and the, uh, the lumber manufacturing industry in general is a very complicated business. And uh, uh, 
uh, something that takes a while to figure out. So, so, um, but but if uh, the new entrants have the the passion and the idea and and, and the products in mind, uh, uh, lots of effort and uh, and they'll be successful. That's great, Ted. Thank you so much for coming on our show. If someone wants to connect with you or reach out, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, well, uh, the um, uh, our our main office phone number is four eight zero. Uh, six four nine four one two seven, and uh, from there, uh, we'll, uh, the call will be directed to uh, to whoever uh, could best help. Excellent, Ted. Thanks so much again for coming on the show, and for our listeners, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you go to venvio.com slash podcast to subscribe and get more. Until next time, I'm Zach Williams alongside Beth Popnikolov. Thanks, everybody. Mm-hmm.